Oh, 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 looks like we're going live. Looks like it's a madman back in the house. What is going on? Kirk M. Samuels, Jason B. Kendrick, Madman and Masculinity. How y'all doing? Man, it's been a while. Gonna, how you just gonna hijack the whole intro, man? Come on, I ain't man. Doing that. I ain't you just doing hijack that. the whole thing, man. Like, come <laughs> on, man. It's God, been a while. We, we, we're out of the group. We're out of the group. Do your thing, Kirk. Do you know you think? how we do, man. We uh, welcome uh, Facebook land. We now interrupt your normally boring timeline to bring you the latest broadcast of the Mad Men of Masculinity. I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. We are the Mad Men of Masculinity tonight. That's Ooh. right. We are just real men having real conversations for you. And tonight, mm. we got another one of those surprise topics. Kirk's going to drop a bomb. Oh, man, he already said you. it, so we're going we're gonna to see what happens here. What's going I'm on, Kirk? We're going we to see what happens, man. I, uh, man, I, 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 it's for everybody that doesn't know, so I, I sent I sent JBK a, uh, a text early, and I said, man, I got a question for you, man. I got a good one for you, and I know you're going to be able to, to crush it. I know you're going to knock it out of the park, man. And, and uh, I said, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> I'm gonna drop it on you. It's gonna be fresh, man. It's gonna be fresh like a new loaf of bread, man. I don't know where that came from, but uh, it'll work, um, man. So here's here's the deal. Okay, deal it up. My what's, superpower what's is yeah. I am the intimacy incubator. What That's is right. your superpower? I am the connection catalyst. I bring people into connection, deeper, stronger, further connection. <sighs> The Intimacy Incubator, The Connection Catalyst. Right. We are recording this on February 13th. Mm -hmm. When that sun comes up, you know what the deal is. Oh, yeah. When that sun comes up, it's Valentine's Day. It's happening. It's it is Valentine's day. day, man. So I got a question for you, man. And Valentine's Day is all about, you know, it's about... The, the relationships, it's about the love, it's about mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, man. We don't even, I, I think today we don't even know what it's about. I think it's no. so commercialized, man. We don't even know what Valentine's Day is about. But my question for you in the context of Valentine's Day, okay, throwing this out there to my man, JBK. JBK, Valentine's Day, love. Mm -hmm. How does a man know when he's ready for love? Ooh, that's a filthy question, hmm. man. That is. You, you hit me broadside with that one. I thought we were yeah. going to talk about. Come on, man. How does a man know? Flowers and chocolate. No way, man. Uh -uh. Nah, that's that's too easy. That's too much of a, that's too much of a <laughs> softball for you, man. Right. That's way too much of a softball. Well, how does a man know? I mean, how does anybody know? I mean, it's that, it's that feeling. It's that, uh, that awareness. Um I think for me, what has become up with, you know, having gone through the process of what it wasn't mm -hmm. and, and now really learning more about what it, what love should be. And love is really, I mean, you get to the basis of it. it it's acceptance. It, it's, it's loving somebody just as they are. So I think for me, love really is feeling like I found this person. I can be 100 percent me. And that's it. Like I can be whoever I am, feel however I do. I don't feel like I got to edit. I don't feel like I got to change or at least this is somebody I want to change with, not for, if, if that makes any sense. Like in, in my past, having uh, those relationships where I felt like I had to edit myself and change myself to make sure that this was going to be copacetic, make sure we were going to be civil, for lack of a better term. And I feel like mm. what love really is, is getting to that place of i can just be me however i am right now and that's okay and yeah i mean there's going to be adjustments and everything but that's day to day but real love to me and what I, i've had to redefine it for myself real love is acceptance it's true acceptance it's unconditional love at, at meaning i accept you just as you are however you are right now how's that land for you yeah but but I don't know, man. For some reason, then he's sitting right. Yeah, sitting maybe, right. maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm. <clears throat> so here's the, see, here, here's what I'm getting at, man. Here's what I'm getting at, right? So a lot of guys are out there, and, and you know, we we go through our journey. I'm talking men, right? We're talking men. We're talking guys. A lot of guys, we go through our journey. And uh, while you were talking, by the way, I was on my other page. I was trying to mess around, trying to share it. Oh, I yeah. think I shared it on mine. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm doing but um, so if I was looking distracted, that's why. 
Um, you know, guys, we do, you know, sometimes we do one thing really good. Um, anyhow, and not multiple things good. Point being, so what I'm getting at, man, is from guys. And we're talking about guys. We're talking to guys. We're talking about guys. We're just talking. This is just man talk. This is just mad men and masculinity talk kind of stuff here. If I'm a guy, how do I know when I am ready for love to give my heart to somebody else? Like, like, how do I know? I mean, after all the stuff I've been through, man, I've been ups and been downs. You know, I got my I got my boy wounds. I got my man scars. All that kind of stuff, man. I might have had some experiences in the past uh, with relationships and I might have some, probably had some failures. You know, who has it, right? Um, some disappointments, some hurts and all that kind of stuff. So that being said, like, how do I know that I'm ready to put it all out there, man? How do I know that I'm ready to put it all out there for love? That's, I mean, that's a personal, you gotta, like, each one of us has got to figure that out for ourselves. However, what I'm finding is when I look at love or look at relationships in a new way, I look at relationships through the point of growth and partnership, not the old, you know, puppy dog love and she's going to complete me and we're going to be happy and we just get to settle down and that's it. So now we're, we got each other, that's it. What I, in, in my infinite wisdom or trials and tribulations or however you want to look at it. Now I feel like those, that, that love needs to be about growth needs to be about us being partners in this world and growing and and coming together. So I think, how do you know, are you ready to be in partnership with somebody else? Are you ready to grow with somebody else? Does this person make you want to be the best version of yourself? Or are you ready to step up? I mean, I know in the past, there has been a lot of that settling, that mentality of like, all right, well, I got them. That's it. I don't got to go to the gym no more. I don't got to read my self-help and my spiritual stuff anymore. I just, that's it. So I think for me, that's really the big, you know, the big linchpin is, you know, are you ready to grow with this person? And is that, do you have the same common core belief of, you know, do we have the same goal out of this relationship? And that's one of the things yeah. that's different for me. You know, it's different than what it used to be. Yeah, but you, you, to me, it sounds like you're talking about, uh, to me, it sounds like um, the way you're phrasing it is it's about the other person. Could it be about us first? Like, mm-hmm. could it, you know, does it start in here in terms of when I am ready, regardless of when, there, if or when there's another person involved? Yeah, I mean, that's why it's it's a hard question to answer because like each man's got to figure that out for themselves. Like, are you ready? Do you feel that thing? And then and it, it's that gut check. Like, do I feel like now I have whatever, it, whatever it is I've been looking for within myself that now I can give like like you say all the time, you know, give from the saucer, not the cup, give from that full cup. Mm-hmm. Am, I, am I ready to give from that? Because, I mean, we all want relationships. We all want to be connected and being in the growth and, and being in the, I don't know, digging, digging in my own flower bed as it were, pulling weeds, you know, trying to, trying to get myself healthy. I feel like I'm ready now. It's just a matter of going through the process of finding the right person or allowing the right person in. And it's, mm. it's interesting because I know for me, what used to attract me may still attract me, but now I have to acknowledge maybe that's not what I need anymore. Mm. you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. it's a real personal question like each man's like yeah we all are want it we're ready mm-hmm. but what are we ready for like what are we putting out because what we put out comes back so mm-hmm. that's why it's, it's a hard question to answer like what 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 do you feel like are the the signs and symbols for you when you're like i think i'm ready that's that's a good that's a good man that's why i'm asking man because <laughs> it's, it's a great question in terms of in terms of am i ready i think first of all all of that work starts in the mirror. I mean, let, let me let me let me go to the end and come back. All right. um, you know, I, I've heard some some theories and some uh, some thoughts that when you are ready, the right person will show up, kind of thing. Yeah. If that is the case, I, I don't know that I believe that or not. Uh, to be honest with you, um, I, I just I don't I don't I don't know about that. I mean, I, I think um, I mean I think you you have a foundation. That doesn't mean that 
I mean, you have the foundation and now you're ready to build the house. I don't know that, you know, if you build it, they will come kind of thing. Um, you know, but that being said, mm-hmm. so if, if I believed in that, then I would say, then that person would say, um, well, if I, if the person is not here, that means I'm not ready. Um, that's one way to look at it. Uh, okay. I think in any case, you know, before you are ready, you universal, whoever you are, you got to do the self work. Yeah. You know, I, I, you are the common factor in every bad relationship you've ever had. And when I say you, I'm not talking, I, I, I am talking to you, but I'm, I'm just, I'm talking you universal, yeah. right? I mean, when you look in the mirror, you are the common factor to every bad relationship you've ever had. And so it's oh, yeah. easy to it's easy to sit back and blame, you know, this person and that person and this person and that person. If nothing else, your picker is broken. Right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. if nothing else, you can point the finger and you can say, you know, yeah, that person was abusive and that person cheated or that person right. was not emotionally available. Whatever excuses, you know, whatever the reason was, if nothing else, why do I keep picking you know, and, and for most people, most people keep picking the same person over and over yeah. again, yeah, just in different form. Yeah. Um, and so either way it comes down to the mirror work, you, yeah. either way it comes down to the work that I have to do in the mirror. Yeah. And and I gotta I gotta work on that person, I gotta fix that person. And then in my mind, my mindset, I think it starts off with you have to love yourself first. You yeah. gotta love who you see in the mirror. You got to you got to love who you see, but you also have to understand and recognize or you can understand and recognize at the same time that what you see in the mirror is a work in progress. Yeah. And yeah, you I mean, need to do that work. I, I feel like you're right in my bio right now. You know, it's been over six years since I've been in like a real. I know you, man. I know you. I know you. You, well. know, you know what's going on. I know you tell my story, but that's the thing. And it's, it's the same thing. You know, I decided I realized I was a common denominator in these relationships and granted they're all about growth you know relationships are all about growth and so i realized i grew a lot i learned a lot and then i was like i need to do some more if i don't want to repeat the pattern and one of the things that came up for me while you were talking was that that when you're ready they will come thing what it seems to be especially when it comes to relating a lot of times is the energy we put out and you know that's why when you're in love or you're in a relationship some you're more attractive and you get all you get a lot more attention and then when you're not and that energy of of looking Mm -hmm. and and desperate or whatever it is Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pushes everybody away and it's so it seems like it's really the energetics of it because i've actually coached people on this and they you know they've had the same kind of question when do i know i'm ready and it's not i'm like it's it's an interesting topic because if you get to the point where you love yourself so much and you feel good about being single and you're good like it's like you get up that one day, you know, I'm good. I don't need anybody. I'll be, I'll be happy if somebody shows up, but I'm good. And it's like, as soon as you're like, I'm good. Or what really seems to be, it's almost like, you know, tell God what you want and watch him laugh. Like you say, you know what? I don't need anybody else. I'm done. I want to be single the rest of my life. And right then somebody shows up and you're like, what the, where'd mm-hmm. they come from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's going to happen usually when you're not looking for it or, yeah. When when you, when you say you don't need it. Yeah. And I think that and I think that a lot of that has to do with like the the energy. Yeah. Because the inner, you know the frequencies match each other. So if you can love yourself and put out love and be in love with yourself, then you're much more likely to attract that person yeah. and it's the same thing. Then it's like you know you're ready when you don't need it. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, and is what loving loving yourself I think is important. I'm not I'm not talking about I'm I'm not talking about love of self. I'm talking about self-love in terms of, uh, you know, I, I want to love myself. If you don't love yourself, then, you know, you won't be able to receive love. I mean, you won't be able to accept love. When love does show up, you'll something in you will say, I don't deserve love. And you'll do something to sabotage it. And, oh, yeah. you know, we both, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> we both have had. I got, I got some stories to talk about. We got some stories. We got some stories in our past. Yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, there, there are people that actively sabotage love when it shows up in their life because they don't believe that they deserve it because they don't truly love themselves. Um, so that being said, and and I think that goes male and female, Mm 
Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest, I mean, I think that goes on both sides of the equation, both sides of the fence. Yeah. And so, you know, for, for guys though, let's, let's talk about guys for a second. You know, what kind of stuff do you think guys need to deal with in the mirror before they are ready? I mean, what are we always dealing with? You know, loving the inner child, loving the, the, the wounded little boy in ourselves, um, finding our own foundation of our own masculinity you know in the men's groups and things i've run there's this undercurrent especially with you know nice guy syndrome and a lot of the other things that because i'm guessing it's because we have lost that rite of passage we don't have the division quest anymore so there's no like line in the sand that says okay now i'm a man mm. and so it's like dealing with that like okay i am a man whatever that looks like whatever i look like maybe i don't fit the john wayne symbology but I got that Y chromosome. I'm a man, you know. I'm a male. I'm handling my business. I'm I'm working and stuff like that. And really, I find that the more we work on whatever we feel is lacking within ourselves and come to terms with that and love that and heal that, that's when we're ready. Because then we're not in that desperation state. We're not in the I need you to fix me. I need you to heal me. Because I mean that was the crux of all my not all, most of my past relationships was me looking for somebody to heal. Cause maybe if I could heal them and help them, you know, the wounded healer sort of thing, if I could heal them, they'll love me more. Well, that's not usually how it works. If you actually help somebody and heal them, they, then they don't need you anymore and they move on. Mm-hmm. You know, are we doing what we need to do for ourselves to be there, to be strong, present as who we are? Because I mean, that's the thing. If we're not showing up as who we are, how are we going to find the right person? Mm-hmm. And if we're not healing those wounds and dealing with those, the, the wounded inner, inner, inner child, the little boy, we, we don't show up as all of us. We show up as, let me, you know, the, the nice guy syndrome of chasing them and let me do for you. Let me, all these things. And they're like, meh, because mm-hmm. we don't have that polarity. We don't have that foundation. We, we're just, we get put in the, the friend zone. Yeah, we have a generation of of we have a generation of man boys um, in in our culture where a lot of us, um, a lot of us didn't get whatever it was, whatever that thing is. We didn't get that handed down to your point. We didn't get that handed down through the benchmark of masculinity, through a a rite of passage or a journey or, or anything like that. And so what a lot of if you're watching this and you're a single woman, uh, maybe even married woman, what you're finding is, and I talk, you know, I happen to have a lot of these conversations with, with women, um, what they're finding or what you're finding in, in the, in the single man space is men who are really um, man on the outside, wounded boy on the inside, wounded, unhealed boy on the inside. So the man on the outside is really trying to protect that wounded boy on the inside. And so we are very um, immature in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of a lot of parts of us emotionally, spiritually, um, even mentally that are undeveloped. And so when we show up, you know, we don't know how to show up. I mean, we might be there, but, as, you know, we have the boy making decisions, but the man pays the consequences and the, the women deal with the results of those consequences in terms of the population of, of, of men that are out here. But a lot of us have that wounded boy inside and we present that we, we, we don't recognize that we have a, there's one thing to have a wounded boy. It's another thing to have a scarred man. Yeah. You can be a wounded, you can be a scarred man. That's totally different than being a wounded boy. I mean, I have a scar on my forehead from where I ran into a trash dumpster when I was six, you know, but it, it doesn't bleed anymore. It doesn't hurt anymore, yeah. but it's there. And so all of the, all of my, my, the things that happened to me, the injuries that happened to me when I was young, if I don't work on healing those wounds, then when I show up, I'm offering, the only thing I can offer a woman is my wound. Yeah. Well, she doesn't want me bleeding all over her. You know, she wants me to show up as, as a man, even I am scarred, right? Yeah. And so, um, but I think a lot of us show up as the wounded boy as opposed to the uh, scarred man. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a great analogy because if you don't heal the wounded boy and become a scarred man, because I mean, once that wound heals, it becomes a scar. Right. If we don't do that work, and I think that's something to be aware of too. Ladies, if uh, if you're talking to a man and he's giving you the bravado, a lot of times he's still got the wounded inner child that he's he's hiding. But if you're talking to a man and, he's, and he 
is open and honest. Like I still have inner child wounds that I'm working on. Mm-hmm. That doesn't, that may not sound as sexy, but that's where you want to go. Cause that means he's aware of his wounding and he's working on it. Mm-hmm. So I know I've made that comment before, even in conversations with just even interest with people that, you know, well, I'm working on things. And they're like, all right, well, come back to me when you're done working on it or when you're healed. And it's like, this is a process. Mm-hmm. Like I'm letting you know this is a process mm-hmm. so that mm-hmm. you're aware. Mm-hmm. So if you tell me to come back, that means you're not ready for me. Mm-hmm. That means that means we're right. not on the same page because right. right. this is a lifelong process. Mm-hmm. Right. And yeah. a lot of times the fastest way, the best way to heal those wounds is in partnership. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you study Course in Miracles at all or a lot of spiritual teachings, the fastest way to learn and grow is in relationship with another person because mm-hmm. this person is going to push your buttons. Mm-hmm. You're in close proximity with them. Mm-hmm. So if you cannot, if, if, if I know in my past, in my experience, when I've come up with the bravado and like, I'm all good and I'm, you know, and I put that, that good front that seems more attractive up front, that usually crumbles pretty quickly because I'm hiding and, and trying to protect that wounded little boy inside. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm more open and honest and bring that forward, I don't, I guess I don't come across as attractive or as appealing, but that should be more appealing because that means I'm doing the work and together I will use whichever woman comes into my life as my partner, as a sounding board to help me. Cause I'm gonna do the healing myself, mm-hmm. but she will be that mirror and that witness mm-hmm. and unconsciously or unconsciously push those buttons. So I'm like, Whoa, I'm triggered. Mm-hmm. I might need to look at that and heal mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. You know, here, and here's something, this might be, relatively controversial for women Um, but but what i see and and i've again i've had a lot of these conversations with with women and and what i see is uh quite often women can be intimidated by a man who's doing his work who's doing the work um and 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 to your point it's one of those will come back to me when it's done and and the, the the reality is it'll never be done I mean, if I'm doing my work, this is an ongoing kind of thing. But what I, I think what a lot of women, uh, what a lot of women default to or struggle with today in terms of that, the the loops and patterns that they keep attracting is the man that shows up like I'm done. Yeah. If he shows up like he's done, that's the one of the biggest red flags that you can find. Denial. <laughs> but when he shows up like he's done, I think a lot of women say, oh, OK, he's done. And so, yeah, I mean, and, but but what the, what's done is the facade. Yeah. What's done is the surface. It's a movie set. It's you the don't want the movie set. You don't you don't want the movie set to be done. I mean, you don't want the facade. You don't want the width. You want the depth. And and so, so what I see quite often um, is a lot of um, a lot of women that I've had these conversations with. Um, <laughs> just, you know, it's like, why do I keep, you know, finding this over and over again? Why do I keep experiencing this over and over again? Again, back to, well, maybe it's the picker. Right. Um, maybe it's the broken picker. But I think, I think on one hand, um, women should not be intimidated or should not be afraid or shy away from men who are in touch with doing the work, who are, I mean, if, if a guy can tell you his mission, his purpose, if he can tell you his personality type, if he can tell mm-hmm. you, maybe like a, you know, a Myers-Briggs, or if he can tell you his love languages, if he can tell you all these types of things, you know, those are signs that he is doing his work and that this is someone that you want to, um, you want to begin a journey with. Not guy that shows up with, yeah. you know, I, I, I look great on the surface. <laughs> on the surface, I look great, whether it's physically, whether it's, you know, monetarily, financially, materially, whatever it is. If he looks great on the surface, that even me, I, I kind of tend to shy away from guys like that. You know, guys like, you know, guys that, that have all their poop in a group. I'm yeah. like, eh, okay. What, what, what are they hiding? <laughs> right. right. That, and that, that's kind of the question. And so, well, and that's, that's what I think what I'm finding, and this is, it, it's not sexy, but this is the, those conversations. We need to start thinking of relationships almost like we do with business. What is the core purpose? Do we have the same goals? And and look at it like this: this is a partnership. And if your man or your woman that you're talking to is working on themselves and is conscious of all those things, you know, personality types, wounds, love languages, now you have a recipe. Now you 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 know, like you have their instruction manual. They're telling you. And if you're talking real intimacy, real coming together, I mean, 
shared wounding or shared healing is, is I mean, you want to talk about coming together and, and creating deep, loving intimacy. It's through the shared healing and the wounding because that's what love really is, is, is showing somebody 100%, like, I'm going to take the shield off. I'm going to take the armor off. I'm going to show you all of my wounds and hope that you will not use that against me. Mm -hmm. And so coming together with somebody who's got it all together, I mean, and sure, maybe there are some people out there who actually have it all together, but that's going to be the, the one end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be people on the other end of the spectrum who don't have anything together. And then we're all on the, somewhere on the spectrum trying to get it together. Right. So, I mean, ma match with somebody who is working on themselves. If you're working on yourself now, if you're not working on yourself, then you're not going to be attracted to somebody who's working on themselves. And vice that's versa. A great point. That's a great point, man. I that's, mean, that's it's a great it's, point. What what what's the purpose? You know, that's and I think that's point. sometimes the hardest part is like, are do we have the same purpose? Do we have core same core values that we can work with and that we you know ha, can can grow with? That's a great point, man. Because I, I know personally, I am not attracted to people, let alone women, who are not oh, yeah. even trying to better themselves or work on themselves. Um, and I am attracted just uh, drawn towards people who are working on themselves in some kind of way um there's a whole different language i mean uh, when we uh, working ourselves we like we speak a, a foreign language to people yeah. who aren't and yeah. vice versa yeah i know we yeah. had this conversation before like i'm so frustrated trying to date because i'm trying to be the more updated version of myself and be open and honest up front right and if I'm not working with somebody who's already who's doing the, the work or working on themselves and is in a similar position, yeah. then they expect me to play the same old asleep game. Yeah. You know, you gotta you gotta wait three days and then do all of that stuff. And then it's like I, and I don't have time for that. I ain't got time. Ain't nobody got no time for all that. <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody got no time for all that. But I think but that's the stuff. And and so so then let's let's give some women some tips. How about that? Absolutely. Um, so, so, so ladies, here's the guy you want to look for. You want to, when you have a conversation with, with this guy, this should be somebody that makes you lean in guy that can tell you, um, what work he's doing on himself, guy that can tell you his mission, his purpose, guy that can tell you his love languages. Um, you know, guy that can, that can tell you, you know, his, his hopes and his dreams. Um, a guy that can name off the top of his head his three closest male friends. Mm. I think that if a man cannot have non-sexual intimacy with another man, then he's not ready for deep, holistic intimacy with a woman. Right. He's got to be able to have men in his life that he's connected to, that he can have intimacy with. And, and I say non-sexual because for men, you know, the word intimacy implies sex. Women, not so much. Women get the bigger picture of of intimacy. So from a guy perspective, though, if he can have men in his life that 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 he can walk with, that he is walking with and that that, you know, that that he can share with and that have refrigerator rights in his life. That's the kind of guy you, you want to look for. But but so anyhow, but all that to say those ki those types of things are not somebody you should run away from if you're a woman and you come across a guy like that. Yeah, I mean, from my experience, when it comes to meeting with somebody who would ought to be on your on your level or ought to be somebody that you'd be interested in a lot of times it's not going to be smooth it's not going to be just how you know the the fireworks and and, and all the chemistry and so like that i mean there's going to be some but there's going to be some uncomfortableness there's going to be some realness and you know ladies you want to look for a man who can listen to you who can make eye contact who doesn't try to fix you who isn't going to mansplain it on you and, and, and try to create, you know, I'm above you and make you subservient, whether he wants to be your partner, but also looking for somebody who does have an awareness, a self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing is, are mm -hmm. they self-aware? Are you self-aware? Mm -hmm. And are you somewhat on a similar path? Because it's, it's a never ending journey and mm -hmm. fellas, when you're out there looking, we tend to get caught up in the new, you know, the grass is always greener and stuff, but you find the right woman, somebody you can grow with. She's going to be a different woman. Mm -hmm. Women go through so many phases all the time that if you can stick with and love that, that woman, she's going to be a different woman. I mean, if you're starting a family and she's the new lovely honeymoon phase, and then she's going to be the, the partner and then the mother. And then, you know, there's all these phases. So you're going to have 
all the variety you want with that same body, with that same woman. But yeah. it's about finding collaboration. It's about finding partnership and, yeah. and, and having similar goals. And yeah, it's not sexy, but you know what? It, 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 that's how you, know, you want you, you want to go fast, go alone. You mm-hmm. want to go far, go together. Can, mm-hmm. Is this somebody you can go far with? And I think that's the question. Yeah. And you know, when guy shows up, I mean, this this kind of is, I guess, directed towards ladies or if you're looking to date a guy, whatever. Um, if guy shows up and he's knight in shining armor, the knight in shining armor has never been in battle. His armor is shiny because he doesn't know how to fight. He has not been in a fight. You want a guy with some past. You want a guy with some 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 scars, some life wounds. You want to, I'm not talking about you want um wounded guy but you want guy that's been there and that has some life experiences that 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 has a story to tell you want a guy that's able to be present that that's able to i you know i've i've been told um i've been told by you know by females in the past that it's you know i'm intimidating the fact that i can just be present and i can listen and i can make eye contact and all that kind of stuff. you want a guy that can be present you know being present is a gift that's why it's called the present and so, you know, you you want all those kinds of things, but but in terms of guy that shows up and you know he's, I can't think of a Disney character that's a knight, whatever. Um, but the guy that shows up with with no dents or no you know battle wounds, you know, I don't want that guy. I don't like to walk with that guy. I mean, yeah. I want the guy that's that's got some stuff, man. Yeah. That's got some you know some scars and has been in battle. It's got some. Yeah, to, to that point, I've, I've even heard from other ladies that they'll ask their man, like, have you womanized? Have you been a womanizer? Have you gone out and, so, you know, sowed your oats and all that stuff? And if they say no, they walk away because it's the same thing. They've already had the experience. If they have done that, if you've gone out and been, and been a playboy or player or whatever, and and now that you, you're done with that, now you don't feel like you're missing anything. And so yeah. the, the uh-huh. educated woman is looking for somebody who has been there done that he's had his past he's had those experiences so now he can he's on to the next thing so yeah yeah, don't look for knight in shining armor i mean he he might be there to to get you across the pond and hold the door for you but he's not gonna be there in the trenches with you yeah and 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 guys do believe in chivalry is not dead these days right guys do believe in that kind of stuff sometimes it can be kind of confusing um because sometimes it's you know, women will get offended sometimes if you open the door for them and all that kind of stuff, which me, I don't care. You just gonna have to get offended because I'm just going to do these kinds of things. And right. if you don't like it, you know, whatever. I mean, yeah. if that's wrong. I don't want to be right. But, <laughs> um, but you know, the, I mean, that that kind of stuff it is alive and, and well. And, and, you know, there are good guys out here. So, I mean, whether you're a guy looking for other guys to walk through life with and you're having a hard time or whether you're uh, looking to date a man. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a lady looking at to date a man, you know, don't get too discouraged. There are good men out here. Um, if you keep finding all the bad men, don't blame the bad men, blame the one that keeps finding all the, the bad men. I mean, let's just be honest, right? I mean, for real, like, you know, put all of us in a bucket because right. you keep dipping out of the same bad men bucket. You know, we're not all in that bucket. You just keep dipping out of that same bucket. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, we're, we're all creatures of habit. It's all about frequency and stuff like that. And so, yeah, if you keep finding the same type of guy, you got to look at yourself because that's what you're attracting mm-hmm. or what you're attracted to. Yeah. I mean, there, there was an old joke about you could put 100 guys in a room, 99 are good guys and one's a, a, a jerk. And if she's attracted to the jerk, she will run up to him, find him no matter what, and be like, there's just something about him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, maybe there's something about you. So yeah. I mean, that's, that's the hardest part is like, are you willing to go, you know what? I want somebody who's done the work and I want somebody who doesn't look like the knight in shining armor. I want somebody who's going to match me. Because that's mm-hmm. the thing, especially in the West, especially in the States, we're always looking for, we, you know, we've been taught that we need to look for the rock star and the knight in shining armor yeah. and all that. Yeah. You know, is that really going to last? Is that yeah. going to be a match or not? So yeah, probably yeah, not. And it, it, be honest. And, and for and for guys, we got to get our stuff together. I mean, we we really do. A lot of us, and I get it. I mean, we work with guys. That's what we do. That's why we're doing this because yeah. that's why the whole mad men and masculinity come. We, because we we have a passion for moving 
the man football down the field. Yeah. And guys, we have a lot of work to do. Um, a lot of it comes in the healing of the wounded boy because what we're doing is we're causing new and fresh wounds for women because we haven't healed the wounded boy inside of us. So we're, our wound is wounding. And so we have to heal that thing, whatever that thing is, whatever's your hang up. And, and, you know, guys, we know like that thing that's inside of me that keeps, that I keep succumbing to and all that kind of stuff. We got to fix those things. We got to heal that, 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 whatever that wound is. And sometimes that involves getting around other men. Sometimes that involves getting in groups that involves counseling therapy. Sometimes that involves, you know, developing whatever your your spirit man that whatever that looks like for you um we got a lot of work to do as men you know the whole me too and times up movement and all that kind of stuff you know i'm glad for all of that because that brought a lot of things to the surface and, and we as men we have to look in the mirror we have to hold ourselves accountable uh for who we are and where we've been and what we are and that's another great point yeah. too we have to stop looking at women as commodities. Oh, um, we have to, you know, we, and all of that. But again, all of that comes back to us. All of that comes back to the work that we need to do as men um, so that we can be uh, the tip of the spear in our culture, in our society. Our country, our culture needs men. Yeah. It needs healthy men. And, and this is the time for it. And I believe it's happening. Oh, it's happening. And that's, you know, if you want an, another reason to, look for a man who's doing his work, looking for a man who's going to be honest about his wounds. The unconscious wounds, you know, wounded people wound people. You know, people, you know, if, if, if they aren't aware of their wounding, they're going to hurt you because mm -hmm. they don't know. So that's, if, if for any other reason, if he's aware of his trauma, that means he's less likely to put that on you. And even mm -hmm. if he does become triggered and react, he's going to apologize and, 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 and own up to it. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, men sharpen men. We need each other. Women, you need each other. Mm -hmm. if, if you get into a relationship and you fall into that, we're got to be everything for each other. You're doomed. I'm sorry mm -hmm. to tell you. Mm -hmm. I mean, just for polarity's sake, you need to have guys night, girls night, men's mm -hmm. groups, women's groups, all that. So mm -hmm. as we move forward, and as we're all trying to heal, you know, come together and acknowledge what you're trying to heal. Come together, and acknowledge that you're doing the work because yeah. doing the work is the new sexy. Yeah. The new black. Yeah. Doing yeah. the work is the new black. I mean, and that's the yeah. thing. We all gotta be doing our work and we do it together. We will heal together. We will grow together and we'll create mm -hmm. that love and intimacy that we're all so desperately looking for. Yeah. So and, I know uh, we, we've gone way over than we normally do, but you know what? That's all right. This is good stuff, good. man. I mean, this is real, this is real talk. And plus we're overdue, you know, yeah. of course we haven't done this. It's in a been while. a minute. <laughs> yeah, I I would like to, you know, encourage women not to give up on men. I've been seeing this theme over the last day or two of Valentine's Day and that kind of stuff. And where, you know, women are almost just like count, you know, just discounting men and in, in the whole, even in the whole Valentine's thing. And, you know, like ladies, we just gonna do us and all that. And that's great. But don't, you know, don't discount us because we need each other. Men need women and women need men. Yeah. And, you know, if we begin in our culture to draw a line and to separate that's not going to be good or healthy for anything because uh, because we we do need each other. And so um, we, we all have work to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's and that's the thing. Are we going to come together and work together or are we going to do like, oh, you need to go over there and work. You need to go over there and work. And that separation is killing us. We yeah. need each other. And, you know, and that's the thing. We've got to look in the mirror and acknowledge none of us are whole and perfect. We're all got wounds and things we're working on. Let's come together and work on it. Maybe yeah. we can grow together. So. Hey, JBK, what if somebody wants to do some work with you, man? With me, man, it's it's easy. You can find me, jasonbkendrick.com. Look me up here on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, we're doing the Connection Cafe. We're doing Mad Men Masculinity. I'm easy to get a hold of. And, you know, I'm here to help you connect mm. first with yourself and then with the world. So, I mean, you know, and I'm sometimes busy. Sometimes I got things going on. So I know my main man here, Mr. Kirk Kim Samuels, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, Wants to work with you. How can I get older? With strength, wisdom, gentleness, and mercy, I co-create a world of intimacy and unconditional connection by teaching and inspiring one million men how to be William Wallace in relationships. William Wallace is the character from Braveheart. He's all about freedom and passion. Braveheart is a love story. When a man is free, he's free to love and he's free to connect and he's free to be intimate. 
And so it, so in my mind, it begins with freedom. It begins with freedom and the passion to be free. And, um, and, and that, that's my, that's my heart. That's my calling. That's my passion. That's my mission. That's my gift. That's what I, that's my dopeness. That's my Superman. Kirk M. Samuels.com is how folks get a hold of me, man. And I'm, I specialize in helping men get free from whatever it is that's holding them down or holding them back from uh, experiencing the love and intimacy and unconditional connection that they're looking for. And that's beautiful. We need, we need more of you guys. You know, I know we're on here and, and this is another thing too. I know when we do these, we get more responses from ladies. We get more ladies watching us. Ladies tell their men, men comment so we know you're out there because you know we, we are doing this for both men and women. Mm -hmm. But if we're doing Mad Men and Masculinity and only women are watching, come on, guys. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, we're here because we need your comments. We need to know what, you, what, what you're struggling with, what you want to talk about. Yeah. So we can talk about it so we can bring up what we've learned. And if we don't know it, we're going to go find it out for you. How about that? Well, and let's have some dialogue, man. Let, you know, yeah. let's, 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 um, you know, let, let's do have these, these man conversations. We got to be, able, and that's, that's why we do this is to have a man conversation, two guys just yeah. talking, you know, and um, you know, we got to be able to do that, man. We got to be able to have that. So that, that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. We, uh, we love y'all. JBK. I appreciate you, man. You're my brother from another mother. I love you, man. Love you too, brother. I'm so glad we finally got to come back together. I promise oh. you people, this is not going to be, it's not going to take as long for the next one. We're going to make sure this happens. We get back on track for y'all, but just, and mainly for us, because I know if, even if y'all weren't watching, we still be doing the same thing. This is what we do. <laughs> what we do. It's been too long. In, in person, this is what we do. We just talk about deep, dope stuff, man. Right on. We deep, dope dudes. That's, what I, that's how we do it. So I am Jason B. Kendrick, the uh, communication catalyst and this is kirk m samuels the intimacy incubator and we are the mad men of masculinity we thank you once again we will see you soon love y'all happy valentine's day yes sir